I'm Jim Check. You're watching Kelowna Now. I'm with Scott Deedles. We're not talking Bitcoin today. We're going to talk the budget. We got an expert Canadian. You live in Canada all your life. I'm an expert now. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting some uh, man on the street kind of like views <laughs> of the, uh, the budget, right? I, I do talk about things other than Bitcoin. There you uh, go. Not at dinner parties, but we can we can make an exception today. It is a new segment we want to start. We want to hear from uh, regular people that come in and just talk about, you know, things that affect the everyday life. Because, I mean, I think more and more we're seeing everyday life getting affected a lot yeah and uh you know honestly like without talking about bitcoin this this what we're talking about today is how i got into bitcoin in the first place because i started to get curious about the government spending and and where these things go over time and uh yesterday was a big day with the budget uh the 2024 federal budget and, yeah yeah and it was uh more of the same more more spending yeah. A lot of spending. Tax and spend. Tax and spend. We got some cool things to show you too, right? But uh, we'll get to them as we get to them, right? So, yeah. What was your overall thoughts on the budget? You know, I love visuals. I mean, I, I think the, the biggest thing is uh, we're, we're on a collision course with um, a debt problem. And, uh, and, and the current government is, is, is buying votes to, uh, to keep- I would the, say addicted to debt. It, totally. Yeah. Addicted to debt, for sure. Like, I mean, I think a lot of the economists came out today and said, holy cow, like at some point we got to stop, right? Because this is going to bankrupt Canada and future generations. I mean, countries aren't any different than households. So everybody knows somebody that spends more money than they have. And the, the difference is, I guess, that with, with people, when you run out of money, eventually the, the party's over. Yeah. The only country that can really get away with extensive debt and still kind of get a pass is the U.S. Because the U.S. dollar is a, is a central bank currency that's held all over the place, right? So, but Canadian dollars don't enjoy that same privilege. Yeah, and so I think that even just by virtue of us, it's like we're hanging out with a rich person. So we have the idea that we, we think could... that it works for us, yeah. right? And it yeah. doesn't, right? Like, yeah. There's some really good stuff. I posted a really good piece on LinkedIn from an, an economist that posted talking about some of the things. You want to run that clip right now? Sure, yeah. Yeah, let's run that clip from uh, that he talks about Tiff Macklin. Macklin yesterday said that, you know, where is sticky inflation? He's concerned about mortgage interest costs. David, that's the central banks, that's the Bank of Canada raising rates. 30% of CPI is caused by the Bank of Canada. The other rent is caused by Justin Trudeau's immigration policy. Now, I'm not arguing about, you know, immigration's good, right? It's good for long term growth. But you got to ask yourself. You, you know, can go watch that full interview with David Lynn, uh, formerly of Kitco.com. Um, you can go watch that full interview on Kitco, or not on Kitco, sorry, on David Lynn's channel. Um, we'll put a link in there for that too, right? You can find it on my LinkedIn. Very, very good interview, one worth watching, right? But he's talking about how 30% of the inflation right now is being caused by the high interest rates. I, you know, and it's kind of a rock and a hard place because of, uh, I mean, it, it's a nuanced subject, right? But what the interest policies of the U.S. matters, like we, we're not, we, we set our own policy, but we're not, we don't exist in a vacuum. Right. So it, it does matter what's going on south of the border. And part of that reason is something called carry trading. It's the international market for bonds. And so if a, if a U.S. bond, for example, government issued bond is paying a higher yield in a currency that's better than ours, if we start lowering our, bond, our yields, right. then our bonds become even less desirable. All, all, all of these things matter. But I think a lot of the, the thought process, like you just hit on it a couple of seconds ago, is they think that we're the same. Mm -hmm. Like the people making decisions here think we're the same as the U.S. The U.S. has that special privilege, right? Yeah. Because that their U.S. dollar is is like the number one currency in the world. Yeah, and I, I don't know, uh, you know, if it's bankers or or uh, the federal government or both, because um, the, this is what we see in the in the in the budget. It, that's more of, of the the policy, and there there isn't a recognition of the reality of what's happening, reflected in you know changes around what, what they think they can offer the Canadian people and, and at what cost, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, lo lots of different sort of low-hanging freebies. A very populist budget. Yeah. Very populist budget, for sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's a few. I, I brought a few. You know I love charts. So I brought a few charts if we want to throw them up to uh, for some visuals. Um, this is one I think is, is uh, an important thing to be aware of. So, and what this is showing is 
the uh, the the budget's numbers based on every annual budget keep getting higher. So there it would be like imagine if you were building a house and every year you know, a multi-year project where the builder kept telling you, actually, it's going to cost me this. And actually, it's going to cost me this. So so the numbers themselves, they never even end up at where they're forecasted. But by the time that time arrives, the, the new numbers are actually a lot higher. So the spending problem, I think, is worse uh, than it as ever gets reported. Because even what, what was, report, what was uh, put forth yesterday, it's probably going to end up being more, more than that. You had it. What was that stat you had on housing? If they built a, they have to. Oh yeah, it. yeah. I mean, part, so part of the budget, and they're going to solve the housing crisis by building uh, nearly four million houses between now and 2031. And to do that, they would have to successfully complete a house somewhere in Canada every eight minutes, 24/7, for the entire time between now and 21, 2031 to do that. Who buys that on their past record? Doesn't seem very likely. Doesn't seem very likely. Yeah. What yeah. was the next uh, the next graph there? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, showing uh, the difference between um, uh, what the what this uh, what the actual and the forecast is in terms of the amount that we're paying on the debt. So this this is I think the the biggest core issue of what really stood out for me in the budget is um, the amount of the cost that Canada is paying on servicing the existing debt is growing. And that's because, uh, you know, as interest rates rise, that affects governments as borrowers the same way it affects individual households. Higher rates mean the the compounding interest on the money that's already been borrowed, the cost of servicing that debt is going to go up. And it's that's growing up. It's about to go up a lot faster. One of the biggest line items in the budget is a lot of the money that was borrowed in uh, 2020 is now going to roll over. And they're saying the debt servicing in Canada now just the debt servicing interest costs are higher than our whole public health care spend. Yeah. Think of that. That's, that's, and it, if you could relate it to your own family life, that's like saying, get, keep getting credit cards, keep getting credit cards till you finally, you're just making the minimum payments, which is the interest payment yeah. till, till you finally can't even make the interest payments. And that's all you're paying is interest payments. And yet you still need money to run your house. Yeah. So I think that by 2028, uh, the interest expense will be the largest single line item in the budget. So that, that's not that far away. And where that's happened in other countries, uh, like 99% of the time leads to what's called a currency death spiral, where when, when, the, when the cost of servicing the debt gets to become such a large portion of the overall debt, that basically the only country that's got itself in that position where the currency hasn't collapsed is Japan. And Japan might actually arguably be in the middle of a currency collapse right now. The, the yen against the dollar is at a 30-year low. And they've had zero interest rates for yeah. I mean, negative J- interest J- rates. Japan's for like a, an anomaly for a lot right. of different reasons. Yeah. What, right. was it, what was the next uh, visual I brought there? Oof. Yeah. So this is uh, another painful stat. I think like you know, the, one of the other things that really stood out to me in the budget yesterday is the, you know, the, the Trudeau government has been anti entrepreneur, anti-small business, anti-medium business, anti-business. I think since he's taken office, <clears throat> he's added a hundred, close to 100,000 people on federal payrolls. Uh-huh. So, you know... And he'll add more because of the regulations that's going to require for all these new uh, taxes that he's putting into place, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, there are a lot of different things about this that, that make it tough because as you, as you strip away the incentives for somebody to have a business... Uh, you know, you, you inspire less people to start businesses and that's going to magnetize more people to want to be in sort of cushy public sector I think jobs. we should all get a job with the government. Right. And uh, what is that's, you know, so where does that go? I think uh, we all know the answer is not good. I mean, the second thing is that the, the private sector is our better allocators of capital. So if you had a million dollars and you could give it to the guy who started Shopify and created 11,000 jobs, or give it to the federal government that spent $50 million building the ArriveCan app that could have been built for 50000 Right. It's a no contest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just, it's just silliness. Right? Yeah. So the, so, the, the, so the tax penalties of you know, the, 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 the climate for starting a business in this country is, is just starting to get so inhospitable. Yeah. And, and it's an international market. People, people will go elsewhere to, uh, to start businesses. Yeah, if you go watch that video, there's some really good key points that that guy makes, uh, Jim Thorne, or James Thorne. Um, 
it's well worth your time to go watch for sure. I recommend you go watch that video. And I mean, he's got some credentials too, right? Mm -hmm. We're just two guys talking. Yeah. What do we know? <laughs> and it's, um, it's getting really bad out there. I mean, they, we have a little comedic uh, video to show you, but the, the sad part about comedy sometimes it really kind of hits home, but that's what makes comedy kind of work in satire and different things, right? Cause, cause you, people use satire to kind of explain what they're really feeling, right? Yeah. And th this video by this senior really kind of explains the mood of a lot of people. Can we, can we run this TikTok that's kind of viral right now? In Canada is crime. If you're a starving senior and you're having trouble making ends meet, I can help you. I stole this watch and these pearls and now I can have fruits and vegetables. And get this. Stealing one Lexus and shipping it to the Middle East will heat my home, pay my taxes, and put food on my table for an entire year. I'm an elderly Robin Hood. I'm Robin from the rich, and I'm given to the poor, which happens to be me. It can work for you, too. Crime is an there, easy you can go way find to that. You want to see the whole thing. Yeah. But again, satire kind of works and it connects with people because they say oh yeah that's that's how i feel right now right that's that's the the power of of comedy right and, yeah. and changing people's perception that's why editorial cartoons worked really well i mean that's why many uh newspaper publications used to run editorials like the yeah. the one that used to run in the times i think was like a big deal right because yeah. it really set the mood of what's going on in the world in a, in a sarcastic uh satirical manner right um i mean i think too like you know, TikTok's a, a newer app. This is a new phenomenon, but it's also just as common for the not funny videos of people sitting in their car crying because yeah, they can't afford a grocery bill. And th that's not, that's new. You know, like 10 years ago, if you, if you worked full time, you, you could expect to be an independent living adult and, and you know, have your own lifestyle. I was saying this uh, yesterday to a friend, you know, when I was, I was in university 20 ish something years ago. And when I was a university student, the average university student wasn't worried about the possibility of ever owning a home. Like, you know, people yeah, just- I, I knew that I, that I would own a home at some point. It's yeah. just a matter of when. Right? Yeah, totally. And uh, people don't feel that. There's an ambient anxiety and sense of despair. And it's because of, you know, the, the root problem is irresponsible government spending. Like there, there's just no way so, around So the, one of the biggest problems I have right now is if you've had the wheel for eight years and then you act like you've just discovered all these problems and you've got the solution in this magic bunch, do you know what I mean? Like without taking any accountability for the mess we're in, mm -hmm. zero accountability. And, and then saying this was solid. This is like just adding more to the problem you already created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a challenge because whoever, you know, if there's a government change or if there isn't, whoever inherits the, the the power in the next cycle they are sort of left with the they better call that person a janitor because yeah. there's a big mess up in, yeah. in aisle 11 yeah right and that's and the other point that this economist makes in this video is and i've made this point many times on linkedin is canada should be sitting in the driver's seat with our resource sector mm -hmm. but, but but we are suppressing our resource sector to the point where we could be using all those profits and royalties to help Canadians, mm. we're actually suppressing it. And um, we have like the worst, if you listen to Kevin O'Leary. The worst uh, management team. The worst management team that Canada's ever had. I mean, yeah. it's not just us saying this. There's This This is the mood for many Canadians. And, and a lot of people won't even listen to the arguments anymore, right? So, yeah, I, I, you know, and I, I think it's just, you have to look at the average person's ability to what they're experiencing on the day to day and ha has that gotten better or worse? And like there, there wouldn't be many people who would think that their life has gotten easier or better over the last yeah. 10 years. It hasn't. Well, in the, in the budget too, there was a, there was a couple passages there talking about support for local journalism. We don't get it. Like we've been told no. Um, and we've asked, reached out several times to Pascal Ensange, the heritage minister. She doesn't have time to talk to us. So I don't know what we're supposed to do with that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, in the budget, forty-three million dollars extra because they already get like billions of dollars, billion dollars plus. CBC got an extra forty-three million dollars. Mm -hmm. What's that for? More raises or I'm filling out the paperwork for laying off more people? Yeah. Like what? What? It, that again doesn't make any sense to me, right? Here's a corporation, a, a crown corporation 
that laid off like 800 people just before Christmas, something around around there, and then took bonuses. The executive team took bonuses mm-hmm. and felt they deserved them. Yeah, in an uncompetitive uh, environment where they, you know, it's a monopoly, right? And, and then, you know, they, the same legislation, Facebook says we're a news organization based on the legislation says that you're a news organization so therefore you're banned because of the fight with bill c18 mm-hmm. uh and then there's this big journalism credit that the government says that we don't qualify for because we're not a news organization so like we're like in pandora's box mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. anyway that's that's just it, it's just full of that kind of stuff though right yeah and all and then this this budget will likely take away people that would rather just go to the states if they got a good idea i think the guy with the theory i think was a canadian yeah yeah but he went to the states right yeah i think our, our biggest tech company here now is probably like shopify yeah whereas it you know blackberry was here you know rim yeah all those companies started out in canada like canada had good young people in that in, in tech well they're probably all gonna go to the states yeah and that, that's kind of what i was getting at with that uh the growing public sector i mean what, what do you when you make the business environment that uncompetitive eventually all you end up with our public servants and uh and and that's this is not a winning formula i mean we're, for us um thinking about all these different you know look at our own local areas we have all these grads coming out of ubco like we, we want them to stay and hopefully start businesses here right you know people need to have optimism about if they were to do that they would be better off rather than leaving the country yeah uh we don't want to stay too long on this but we do want to, this is again another new segment we're going to start on Kelowna now or if you have you want to come in and talk you got a rant you want to talk about it um, you want to be heard you want voice to be heard because I think a lot of people are saying their voices aren't heard uh, we're going to run this as a regular segment and then you can have a voice in what's going on because you're an expert Canadian there you go <laughs> the, the first of many <laughs> expert Canadian speaking out <laughs> um, and thank you for watching Kelowna now <laughs>